Welcome, NCLEX High Yielders. This is Dr. Zishan, and I'm the host of NCLEX High Yield Podcast, where we will be giving out daily content for your exam, tips and tricks that the boards love to ask, and overall general information on how to study, what to study, and complex topics broken down for you. Whether you're a first-time test taker or even a repeat test taker, we have helped people across the globe pass their NCLEX exam, so do not give up and get motivated. Make sure you subscribe to our podcast and also visit our Instagram at NCLEX High Yield, at NCLEX High Yield, where you can DM us questions so we can answer them on the podcast. Also, check out our website, www.nclexhighyield.com, and subscribe to receive a link to our weekly free Zoom session. Free Zoom session where I drop all types of content, break down complex topics, and make them easy for you to understand every Wednesday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. See you guys then. Take care. Hey guys, just a heads up. The questions that I'm talking about in this podcast are going to be located in the about section of this episode. So make sure you look at them. There's two questions that I'm going to post that I'm talking about because I do kind of skim over it throughout the podcast, but that way you got an exact idea of which questions I was talking about. All right, guys, hope you guys enjoy the podcast. So today you hear my students talk about the method and a lot of people have hit me up on my personal Instagram. I get messages from our team that says that, hey, dude, people don't know the method. You talked about the prioritization, the the one of eight, but the method that everyone talks about, like don't deviate from it, don't deviate from it. Everyone of my students says it's not rocket science. All right. It's just something that I use to keep myself organized when I was taking my boards and it was more so to decrease my anxiety level and organize my thought process. Because these are board exams. They're going to word things in a very complicated way. That verbiage is what gets to us. And I'm going to show you very simply what this method is. Again, it's not rocket science. It's just most of you probably do this to some extent. I'm going to show you how to do the method, right? This, This uniquely named the method. So each question we're going to approach by reading the last part of the question first. So read the last part first. And I'm sure one of my team members will type this up for us as well too and drop it in the chat. You read the last part first. Why do we do that? Well, let's figure out what they're asking. So which findings should the nurse report to the healthcare provider that could possibly delay the procedure? Step number two is put in your own words. And why do I do that? How many times do you guys catch yourself going back and saying, what did they ask? What did the question ask? If you put it on your own words, now you're looking for something. Get out the nonsense in there. So what's gonna cause me to delay this procedure? Step number three is figure out the situation. The situation is the remainder of the question. So an eight month old with a femorally inserted balloon angioplasty for a congenital pulmonic stenosis in the cardiac cath lab. What am I, what am I concerned about that's gonna make me delay this procedure, this femoral insertion or this cardiac cath that we're worried about what are we worried about that's going to delay this procedure so now i put the whole thing in my own words by figuring out the situation now what have i done this this child is getting a femoral insertion something that could delay it well i just took out all this nonsense and i just said this person is going to get a femoral insertion what could potentially delay this procedure well what i've done now is i've taking control of this question. This is what the boards wanted. What I'm asking right now is I'm asking what is going to make me delay this procedure. Now, step number four, you start with number four and you do not make a decision. You start with number four and you compare it to number three. So slight cyanosis of the nail beds versus an infant with a severe diaper rash. Just between those two, make a decision. That's it. So we get rid of, and look for these little clue words. Slight cyanosis of the nail bed. Well, that's expected. This child's got pulmonic stenosis. Severe diaper rash. Okay, why did they use the word severe? Well, between these two alone, I think I'm more concerned about severe diaper rash delaying the procedure. Infant that has NPO, well, this is expected. They're going into a procedure. So they're going to be NPO. So between severe diaper rash and NPO, I'm still concerned about the severe diaper rash delaying the procedure. Auscultation with a loud murmur 
or severe diaper rash. Well, between those two, I'm still freaking out about the severe diaper rash. This is actually one of the types of questions, and we'll get into those. These are the ones that we're freaking out about. Remember when I talked about the prioritizations, there's one of eight things that you're looking for, and you'll find it 90 to 95% of the time. Which one of the eight is this? If you haven't listened to that lecture, it is on our podcast, which is absolutely free. So which one of the eight is this? This is sepsis. This is sepsis. Severe diaper rash with ephemeral insertion, we're going to introduce bacteria into that bloodstream. That is bacteremia. That will lead to sepsis. Find it. They're not going to directly say sepsis. This NCLEX High Yield Podcast is brought to you by Immunacy. I-M-M-U-N-A-C-Y. Immunacy.com. Immunacy is an immune system booster formulated by doctors and pharmacists. This team of MDs, PharmDs, DOs, and PhDs have put together a proprietary formula with the highest quality ingredients to keep you in your best health. All natural, gluten-free, zero sugar, vegan, no GMOs, and fully bioavailable. Stock up now to keep your immune system at its best. Immunacy is now available at immunacy.com. Check them out. And now back to the podcast. So this is the method. Why do I do this? Well, if you look at this, if you start from here, eight month old femorally uh, insertion or inserted balloon angioplasty, blah, 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 blah. And you come down to here and then you start reading all this. Well, guess what you're going to do? You're going to go right back up and you're going to repeat the whole process again. You're going you're gonna to read this whole thing over and over and over again. How many people are, do that? I was guilty of it. I'd read, 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 read. And I'd be like, oh, let me go back up and figure out what they were asking because I just read all of this stuff and then I forgot or I looked at the answer choices and got a little confused and went back up and I was like, wait, what are they really asking here? It saves you time. And if you just compare one answer to the other, one answer to the other and make a decision, guess what you're not doing? You're not going back and second guessing yourself because a lot of people tell me, oh, well, I was thinking that I was thinking that, but then I changed my mind last minute. Well, if you've eliminated one answer because you like another one better than it, don't go back to it. It's that simple. Why would you change your mind? You already picked one that's better than the other one. Keeping that process organized. I always talk about being organized with your thought process because why? Organization in general, in general, not just on the test, organization in general decreases anxiety. If I was to tell you, oh, you know, I want you to do this, 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 this. And you were like, oh my goodness, there's so much I got to do. Whereas if I was like, okay, between 9 and 9.30, do this. Between 9.30 and 10, do this. Between 10, 10, 15, do this. You keep it organized and you will get things done. Same thing with your thought process. If you're second guessing yourself or you're feeling anxiety when you see a, a vignette, a question, stick to the method. Don't deviate from it. So again, all you got to do is start with the last part of the question first. Put it in your own words. That's huge. Put it in your own words. Then figure out the situation. Put the whole thing in your own words so you know what you're looking for. Get rid of all the nonsense, all the confusing stuff. Simplify it. Start with four. Do not make a decision. Don't. Don't make a decision. Just compare it to three. That's it. And then move your way up. I start from the bottom. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Because if you look at the test and you start from the bottom, you're not seeing four answer choices working your way down. If you start with four and just compare it to three, that's it. Like I said, the method's not rocket science. It's just a great way to keep yourself organized. That's it. Keep yourself organized. Decrease that anxiety. Look, these are boards. We're going to be anxious as it is. If we're anxious going in, we're anxious because we failed. We're anxious because we don't know what's on the test. Why add in more anxiety? Let's decrease it. Remember, on the exam, there are going to be questions that you do not know. Every single student of mine, every single student of mine, will tell you half that test I didn't know. With select all that apply, we don't compare the answers. Each one of these answers in and of itself can be correct or incorrect. So you're not comparing. All you're doing is making a decision. You're still doing the last part first and then putting it onto your own words, figuring out the situation. You're starting with number five. You're still starting with the bottom. Started from the bottom now we're here. You're going to end up making a decision with that one. Why did I choose this question? Let's say on test day, right? On test day, you get this question 
and you've been coming to Zoom and you've been maybe working with me. Maybe you're in the course. Maybe you're doing the guaranteed pass with me and you read this question on test day. Which of the following signs of heart failure should the nurse teach to the parent to report to the healthcare provider? So what are the signs and symptoms of heart failure? Next part is figure out the situation. Home health nurse is visiting an infant who recently had surgery to repair tetralogy of Fallot. Oh my goodness, I worked with Dr. Zishan for so long. I did or did not spend money and that dude didn't teach me about tetralogy of Fallot. What a jerk. What a jerk. He didn't teach me about tetralogy of Fallot. This is what they're going to do on test day. What is this question really asking? It has nothing to do with tetralogy of Fallot. Nothing. They threw in something to throw you off. All they're asking about is heart failure. That's it. That's it. You have to eliminate those things. Put it into your own words. Well, they're, all they're asking about is signs and symptoms of heart failure. That's it. And remember what I told you. And you heard it from Claire. You heard it from Ayana. You need to understand things. People come to me all the time. They're like, yo, Dr. Z, man, I've been using UWorld like three times and I failed it. Well, if you ask any student of ours, they're going to say all you need is UWorld and us. That's it. UWorld and us. It doesn't matter if you used it in the past. It's about how you're using it. And we've got a podcast episode. The first episode actually talks about why we love UWorld. So these are the types of things that you need to know when you, when you study UWorld because those select all that apply are concept questions. Hey guys, Dr. Zishan here. Thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys could kindly subscribe, leave us some stars, whatever you think it's worth, and leave us a review. We always want to get better for you guys and want to keep putting out this free content for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one. See you on the next podcast.